Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I will be doing a collector's tag. Collectors? K-pop collectors? Tag? A tag. You know those things where you get a bunch of questions and then you answer them? But nobody asks the questions so they're kind of unprovoked. That's what we're doing today. And I'm not doing it alone. I'm actually collabing with my friend Ed or Pun Parker here on YouTube. He is a really good friend of mine. We've been friends for quite a while now and we wanted to do a like YouTube collab since we're both YouTubers <laughs> or at least trying to be. <laughs> Definitely go check out his channel. He also posted his version of this tag that I really do recommend that you go check out. I will of course also be leaving the link to that down below. So make sure that you go watch it after you watch this video, of course. So we're doing a collector's tag and there are quite a lot of these going around on the gram, on the internet. And we look at them and we were like, eh. So we got together on the phone, of course. We are still in a global panorama, so please like keep your distance. And also he lives in Sweden. So even if I wanted to see him in person, I couldn't. But we got together and made all these questions. And of course they are inspired by every other tag that's around these days. <laughs> since, you know, it's kind of inevitable that some of the questions are the same but we did like come up with this tag ourselves so don't worry we're not just like using anything without giving the original creator credit i will try and throw up like a picture of the list on the screen or i will keep it down in the description or in the pinned comment i think i've talked enough in this intro already so let me just get straight into it i have the questions here <laughs> in my little notebook so let's start off with Question one. So first question of the tag is an album from the group that got you into K-pop. And we thought it would be fun to include this question since like, you know, it's like the beginning of our K-pop journey. And I do have an album from the group that got me into K-pop and uh, it's shiny. Or well, technically it's shiny. They're definitely like the first K-pop group that I heard a song from and then decided like, oh my God, this, this is my shit, you know? So yes, shiny and we have their fifth mini album everybody this is such a great album to be honest definitely go check it out and also stream don't call me question number two so you know how in k-pop albums are divided into like single album mini album full album and repackage album depending on the contents of the album so we decided for the next couple of categories we wanted to do favorite single album favorite mini album favorite full album and favorite repackage album so let me get those out. So for single album, it has to be my Cherry Bullet, Let's Play Cherry Bullet album. This is their debut and I love everything about this. There are free songs on this album, right? Yeah, free songs. And I love all of them a lot, especially Q&A and Violet. Those are some of my favorite Cherry Bullet songs and it's just a great album. And the concept too is just incredible like i love the video game concept and i love like their outfits everything about it is amazing love this then for favorite mini album i have beckham's debut album city lights or his solo debut album of course his debut album is mama right there if you know me even a little bit you know that i'm absolutely obsessed with this album i will not shut up about it it's so good like it's just my style of music and i just this blew me away in <laughs> like every shape or form and i love the aesthetic of it as well like let me take out like this cover like this is so pretty <laughs> incredible i love that album so much so for full album i kind of cheated and i had to pick two so first one is 17's love and letter i love this album so much and it has one of my favorite of their title tracks on here which is pretty you i'm absolutely in love with that song <laughs> i love 17 so much mostly everything that 17 puts out i'm just absolutely in love with they almost never disappoint <laughs> So yeah, I really, really do love this. And I actually also really like the packaging style. I like this like box packaging where you have to like open it up and then all the contents are inside. One Reeler for Ice One did this too, and it's just incredible. And speaking of Ice One, the other one I chose is Blue Mice. This is their only full album, but it did not disappoint. I love this so much. I love their unit songs. I love just the entire vibe of the album. One thing I don't like about this though is the amount of inclusions. It's just, it's unnecessary. <laughs> 
but I really I do love this so much. And if you're curious, my favorite songs on this are Pink Blusher, Dreamlike, Spaceship, and Open Your Eyes. Those are some of my favorite. Not only songs on this album, but just Ice One songs in general. Then for favorite repackage album, I also kind of have to cheat. There is absolutely no way that I can choose between these three. My cat came to say hello. <laughs> There's absolutely no way that you're gonna get away with jumping up on one of those shelves. I'm gonna kill you. Good. As I was saying, these three albums. Let's go in chronological order, shall we? First up is EXO's Growl. This was a repackage of their previous album, Wolf, which I know the average K-pop fan will probably be like, Wolf? You serious? but it had some really great songs on it. Not only does Growl, the title track, mean so much to EXO and EXO-Ls, since it really just skyrocketed their popularity, but this album just has some of their absolute best songs like Baby Don't Cry and Peter Pan and Lucky, Heart Attack and 365. They're just really good songs and this really just emphasizes what I really love with EXO's music this and love me right so yeah this one is a very strong contender for this category next up going chronologically we have this one which is 17's director's cut which is a repackage of their teenage album now teenage is an amazing album by itself i was really close to choosing this for the full album category as well this one has my favorite 17 songs hands down Thanks is my favorite title track. It's very closely tied with Pretty You, but it is my favorite title track. The track on here that is called Run To You is my absolute all-time favorite Seventeen song in general. I really love the song. It kind of gives me like anime opening vibes. Like you could put it over like Haikyuu and it would work. It's such a good song and it gives me such good energy. And also the vocals in it are amazing. I love that like Joshua has so many parts in this song because he does them so well. And speaking of Joshua, he has a like unit song with Jonghan in this album, which is like Falling For You. Is that the one? It's so good. And Thinking About You is also such a cute song and just, I love them so much. And then moving on to Red Velvet's Rebel Festival, the final, the final, finale, finale, this. This one, I wasn't quite sure if it actually counted as a repackaged album because it is, if you're familiar with Red Velvet, you probably know that there was um, the Rebel Festival day one and day two, which had Sim Salabim and Oompa Oompa. And then they did this for Psycho, Song of the Year 2020 by the way, which included all of the songs from the two previous albums, plus like a couple of new songs. And I just love the Rebel Festival so much. Like everything about it, the concept, the song, like the music is immaculate, and of course the just errors in general. Although Simpson Labim era was a little bit questionable in terms of like outfits, but it's fine. They pulled it off. They're red velvet, of course. Just combining all of the songs in here just makes this the perfect album to just put on and listen to in full. Some of my all-time favorite red velvet songs are on this album, including Jump In, Carpool. Sunny Side Up, Milkshake, Oompa Oompa, and La Rouge. And of course, I just, I love the rest of these songs as well. They're just incredible. This album right here, this is it. <laughs> this is the standard. But yeah, like I mentioned, I'm not quite sure if it actually counts as a repackage. Since it's more like the previous albums, like more plus a little extra, but I'm gonna put it here. Next question is your favorite like concert movie slash DVD and I only own concert DVDs for Ice One so it's kind of like a pick between Eyes On Me right there and One Eric Theater and if I had to choose one it would have to be One Eric Theater for the sole reason that I actually saw this live since it was online of course seeing Ice One with the crowd and actually seeing them being able to <laughs> perform for their fans is very nice to like watch and see but this brings me memories whenever i watch it and i just it's kind of bittersweet but definitely this one also the concept of one eric theater i will never shut up about how absolutely incredible it was the whole like theater concept with like the tickets and like you got this like popcorn thing in the merch incredible love this and i love the photo book of this 
and just everything about it. The next three questions are also kind of related. So one of them is your favorite second gen album, the other one is your favorite third gen album, and the last one is your favorite fourth gen album. And don't worry, of course we know that there is a first generation as well, but I don't think any of us actually owns any first generation album, although I have been pretty, pretty tempted to buy all of Boa's discography. Someone stop me. So when Ed and I talked about this question, we kind of agreed that we wanted to do it like so if we were to choose a second gen album, then it would have to be released in like the prime time of the second generation and so on for the other gen. Um, but sorry Ed, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna choose this one for second gen. <laughs> I realized that I hadn't given any love to Jonghyun in this video yet, so that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Here's She Is by Jonghyun. It is his first full album and it is incredible. Every song on this album is amazing. This album right here, best to ever come out of a second gen artist. He did that. For a third generation album, I would pull up my City Lights albums once again, but I kind of want to like change it up a little bit. So let's do Don't Mess Up My Tempo instead. This album is so weird. It like, it's supposed to be like this, like the cover, but you open it from like, it's very annoying. This album is great. All of EXO's music is great, but this album is amazing. I love. This was released in 2018, so technically at the beginning of 4th gen. I kind of threw away that rule. This is my video. My rules. This is the one. I also very quickly want to shout out the other contenders in this category. First up, we have Russian Roulette by Red Velvet. Great, love that. Then we have Love Me Right by EXO. Munsta X, The Connect. Great album. I don't really stand my sex that much anymore, but I love this album so much and I will defend it to death. And 17's Going 17, we love. And then lastly, we have NCT 127 Limitless. This is actually one of my favorite albums, but I did not know where to like place this in this category since a lot of people consider NCT a fourth generation boy group, even though they debuted in 2016 and this came out in 2017 and the fourth gen kind of started in like 2018, 2019. I didn't want anyone in the comments being like, oh my god, NCT aren't third gen or NCT aren't fourth gen. So they just, I'm just shouting them out right now, okay? <laughs> I love this. Although only musically. Everything else about this album, I hate. And for fourth gen, I am gonna have to pull out my girls. <laughs> and yes. I did choose free albums for this question because fourth gen girl groups are superior. First up is One Eric Diary and I chose this version to show you, even though the other version is my favorite, but I didn't want to like dig it out from in there. This album is amazing. Absolutely incredible. Secret Story of the Swan is definitely my favorite Ice One title track. I love the song, obviously, and I love the concept and I just, the entire like aura of this era is just incredible. And I also really love Pretty, Merry Go Round and Bo Rococo? You guys know which one. And Welcome is such a nice like intro to an album. I don't think I've ever been so passionate about an intro as I am about this one. <laughs> it's so good. Then next up is another Ice One album and it's their One Wheeler album. Look at her. I love their like one series. The like these two albums have been so good and I'm so sad that we won't get another one. This album has my new favorite B-side, which is also a new, such a good song. I love everything about it, especially Eugene's vocals. I love that she really gets to shine in that one song. And then lastly, a non-ice one album, which is Cherry Bullets, Cherry Rush. This came out this year and it is so good. I'm so happy that we finally got a mini album from them. Like there are actually songs on here <laughs> during 2020. We got two new songs, Hands Up and Aloha Oi. And we don't talk about Aloha Oi, so technically there's only Hands Up. And this is so good. I love all of the B-sides on here and I listen to them daily. They are so good. <laughs> there's like something on my cover. Fun. Also a quick shout out to Super One. Next question is your favorite photo book. I like most photo books. I think it'll be easier for me to point out a photo book that I don't like, but I eventually decided on this one. Which, <sighs> I just, listen, this photo shoot on Mark is absolutely incredible. I love so much. <laughs> like, I love this photo book so much. I love all the pictures and I just, this look on him is like, 
nothing special, but it's incredible. And also a quick shout out to Russian Roulette by Red Velvet and the diary version of One Eric Diary. Next question is your favorite CD played? And I don't know, this might be like a weird response, but I really like Luna's CD plates, especially for like the solos. I only have one of them left at the moment, which is Yojin's. I like the like simplicity of them and I also like that they all match. That's one of the things that I really appreciate about Luna and their album packaging is that they're not, you know, 17 or XL that you can see behind me that are like a mess. So yeah, I really appreciate Luna's album packaging and their CD plates. They're really cute when you have like all of them. Next question is prettiest light stick you own. And I currently have three official light sticks. I have Red Velvets, I have 17's version one, and I have NCT's up there. Spoiler alert, it's not that one. And then I have these two mini light sticks. This is from 17's first fan club kit. And this is from X1 Showcase. But my absolute all time favorite light stick is one of the ones that I have, fortunately. And it is, of course, my Carrot Bong version 1. It is so stunning and it is even more stunning in real life. I cannot put it into words. It's just beautiful. Like, absolutely beautiful. And I was gonna use it for my concert last year in March, but you know what happened in March. Let's not talk about it. Next question is favorite album packaging. And like I mentioned earlier, I really love box packaging. So where you get, like, a box and then you can, like obviously open them and then inside are like all of the inclusions and the photo book and then preferably the photo book needs to be like a book please a book style photo book so i brought love and letter and ice one's one wheeler to kind of visualize it and you saw it coming least favorite album packaging when i first opened this album i was like struggling with getting like this open without ruining it and i accidentally turned it upside down and i don't know if you know about this album but there's like a shit ton of things in here and these aren't even all of it because i took out all of the little extra stickers that are just lying around in here it is so ugly and inconvenient and limitless deserves better and same with hengare i like stored away the um bag because i don't like bag packaging Please. But yeah, this you had to like screw together. I know a lot of carrots are like, oh my god, it's so creative. I love doing it, but I did not. And I actually like held off buying this for so long. Shout out to Wano's Love Synonym and um, XOSC for doing the exact same thing. <laughs> also 17's a note. I hate it. So the next question is favorite binder page or like page in any of your binders. And I think I've made it pretty clear by now that I absolutely love this era. This is my Hyewon One Eric Diary page. I don't really know if you can see it. Like, there's kind of like a glare. I love this era so much and I just loved Hyewon in this era and the cards are so freaking adorable. Next question is your favorite unit PC. So this is about a photo card and I had to choose two. I have to like leave for you to be able to see these. One is of Hyewon and Unbi from Colorize and the other is a Super One unit with Mark Baekhyun and Lucas in it. And the reason I picked this one is because of Mark's hair and the fact that it's Mark and Baekhyun, two of my ult on the same like photo card. Love that. <laughs> Next question is the favorite photo card that you've ever pulled yourself? And there will only ever be one answer to this question. And it is my Mark special yearbook card. The fact that I pulled this is absolutely insane. Like from my own albums and out of 23 members, I pull Mark. Insane. This is my absolute favorite card that I've ever pulled. Next question is your favorite signed item. And I have two, once again, of course. First up is my signed One Reeler photo book that I got from the fan sign. Of course, they signed to my name since I won the fan sign. And it was from my ultimate bias, which is Hyewon, of course. And not only her, but also Yujin, Sakura, and Cheon also signed to my name in this photo book. And I'm just, this is my most prized possession. I cannot believe this happened. <laughs> and the other one that I chose for this is my Dino fan sign slot. Dino was my old, like before Hyewon, and has a very special place in my heart. And it's probably the idol that I've ulted for the longest time. I love this man so much. And when I saw someone selling fan sign slots for 17 on Twitter back when an ode happened, you know, I needed to get something signed to me from him. It just, it means a lot to me. If you started standing K-pop and started collecting K-pop in 2020, then you're probably 
don't really understand the concept of this. This is from back when we used to do in-person fan signs. People would often go and obviously get their entire album signed, but then they would get every member assigned to like a different person and sell them off on Twitter or Instagram. And then this was like the closest that we overseas fans could get to a fan sign album. Obviously that has changed with 2020 and everything that happened last year. So now we have chances to get our own albums and actually also get the experience of meeting our idols. But before that, this was the closest that I ever got to that and I'm so happy and thankful that I could get this. And the last question is the most meaningful item to you and well... <laughs> these ones. I already went through these two and explained to you why, I just wanted to emphasize that they are the most meaningful items to me. But I also wanted to bring these out. This is my Luna Solar fansign album. Let me find um, a page. I met all of them back in September for their debut and I'm so thankful for that. Like. It means so much to me to have this and the fact that I've spoken to them. One of the members, Terong, is actually someone who I've followed since Produce 101 when she was on there. So this means a lot to me as well, of course. And then lastly, we have these two, which are printed Polaroids that have since then been signed by the members. I do have a full set of all the members that were active during this period. So everyone but Jacob, but I just decided to only pull out Sangvan and Baron. These were signed and given to you if you attended their Senorita meet and greet tour in Europe. And I went to Berlin and I actually went there on my birthday, which is just incredible. Most of my like idol encounters have been on my birthday, which is like pretty impressive to be honest. But yeah, basically they had a fan sign and instead of signing albums, you got these signed. So even though they are printed, they are signed like authentically. They were signed right in front of me. So I know for a fact that the signatures are real. <laughs> so yeah, those were all of the questions. I know I took way too long with all of these questions. I'm just very passionate about my collection. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, this was a collab with Ed and I will of course be leaving all of his links down below, including his version of this video that should be uploaded at the same time as this one. So yeah, now that you've finished watching this video, you should definitely go watch his version. He collects Itzy, Ice One, Icon, 17, Everglow, I don't know. Itzy, definitely. If you like Itzy, you should go check out his version of this video because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of itsy in there. <laughs> Lastly, before I go, I just want to let you guys know that I opened a TikTok and have started posting some TikTok videos on there. So I will also be leaving my links to that down in the description. <laughs> so please, if you like my collection or just want to, you know, support, then please go check that out. Uh, it would mean a lot to me. And as always, please do check out the links that are in the description to see what you can do to help the current situations that we're facing around the world. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another one. Bye!